I love using dynamic symmetry when I'm in a situation I'm trying to sculpt something symmetrically and it's off kilter, like a tilted head or something like that. It's not aligned with the grid and maybe part of the model is not aligned with the rest of the model. It makes it very difficult to sculpt symmetrically unless you know how to use dynamic symmetry and that's what I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. So I'm working on this project, cleaning up some scan data, making this cherub model out of it. Here's the original scan data. You can see it's very low polygon. And then I did this version, which I'm just cleaning up the sculpt and started to block out the anatomy and just fixing some issues with the scan and then starting to work on the face. But you can see as I'm working on the face, uh, it's not going that great. Uh, poor kid looks like uh, he's, uh, he's got some issues here. So in this version of the model, things are starting to look a little bit better. And the way I was able to do this was to work symmetrically. But as you can see, the head is at a tilt. Even the model itself is not aligned with the origin or anything. It's off kilter. So how do I solve this issue? Uh, for me, I kind of need symmetry in order to sculpt the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Otherwise, I go crazy and things look kind of weird. So the solution to this is dynamic symmetry. So let's go back to this version of the model. Let's take a quick look at how symmetry works in ZBrush. There's actually three main modes to symmetry. There's global symmetry, local symmetry, and dynamic symmetry. Global symmetry, if I press the X button, is based on the grid. So you can see I have symmetry, activate symmetry across the X axis, and as you can see, it's based on the grid. I'm gonna turn symmetry off, move this guy off to the side here so it's no longer at the origin, and press Q for draw mode, turn symmetry back on by pressing the X button, and you can see that symmetry is based on the grid here. So that's global symmetry, and that's the default. If I go over here, I'm gonna turn on the local symmetry button. Let's make sure that dynamic is off. So if dynamic is on, you'll see this label is uh, highlighted in white. If I click it again, it's grayed out, so that's off. So now this is standard local symmetry. So now it's using symmetry based on the bounding box of the object, so the object no longer has to be at the origin. However, as you can see, if I zoom in here, it's still on the center of the object, so that doesn't help me with the face because the face is at a tilt. Right, it's like this. So this is where dynamic symmetry comes in. Now I'll turn on dynamic symmetry. I don't see much of a difference, so why is that? It's because dynamic symmetry is actually based on the position of the gizmo. So I'm gonna turn symmetry off for a moment, press X. Let's just turn everything off there. I'll press W for the gizmo it's over here. And then to position the gizmo, I'm gonna hold the Alt key and move it up. And every time I hold the Alt key, you can see I can move the gizmo and even rotate it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate the gizmo so it's in line with the nose. And this will take a little bit of work, but it's not that bad. We know how faces work. So I'll just get it on the nose as best as possible. Take a few tries. It's also a little bit easier if you have perspective off. So make sure you turn perspective off while you're doing this. And there we go. Now I'm going to press Q for the draw box, X for symmetry, turn on dynamic symmetry. And now we can see symmetry is based on the position of the gizmo. So it's important to remember that while you're working with dynamic symmetry and you start moving the gizmo around to say reposition the arm or something like that, then your symmetry is going to be realigned with the gizmo. So that's gonna mess you up. So for the moment, while I'm working on the face, I'm gonna make sure that I don't move the gizmo. And then I can go in here and take like my uh, clay tools, clay tubes, maybe bring down the Z intensity, and then just start to shape the face. As you can see, this is gonna be a lot easier to work with. Now the other thing I like to do to speed this process along is we can use mirror and weld to make the head symmetrical so that'll save us a lot of trouble because you can see I'm working with the original asymmetry here and cleaning that up is gonna take some work. It's not impossible, it's definitely easier than working without symmetry, but it's still, if I'm in a hurry and if I'm doing a lot of these models for a client very quickly, then using a little bit of mirror and weld to make things a lot easier. So the way I usually go about doing that is I'm gonna make a copy of this tool and then basically chop off the head, work it with it symmetrically, and then you know get the head looking good, and then reproject it back on my original model. So I'll just show you the 
process of setting that up. Uh, so I'm just get a position here where I can see the head. I'm going to turn off symmetry. Let's duplicate this. So here's my duplicate. I have the solo button on. I'm going to hold Control and Shift. Pull up my select lasso. All right. Get rid of all that. And then I'll go down here and do geometry, uh, modified topology, delete hidden. So I don't have anything in hidden anymore. And now I'm going to do mirror and weld. And as long as I have dynamic symmetry still on and this on, when I do mirror and weld, it works pretty well. It works okay. Maybe that's not perfect. So I can undo that. Press W and maybe scooch this over a little bit. Maybe just take a few tries to get it the way I want it. can even hold the alt key. Every time I'm positioning the gizmo, I'm holding the alt key. So maybe rotate a little bit. Let's say something like that. And then I'll go in here and do uh, maybe a quick Dynamesh. Dynamesh is already on, so I'm just gonna control, drag and release. Make sure I have symmetry on and then go in here and start cleaning this up. And now I can work symmetrically. And that makes my life a lot easier. Okay, just fast forward a bit back to the way that I worked on this model. So here is my sculpt. At least it's looking better than it did. And here's my original model. So what I'll do is go in here. Well, this is not the original model, but this is the model I was working on. And I'll just, you know, quickly paint a mask on the face. Invert the mask, maybe blur it just a little bit more. And then make sure I have the, this one visible. This one's selected. I still have the solo button on. If I turn solo off, you can see that. You could move the head around to make it position a little bit better, but I'm just gonna quickly do this using projection just to show you how to go about doing it. So I'm down here uh, below my sub tools in the project settings. I just have geometry turned on. I'll do project all. And it's gonna project from that severed head onto my chair model I can clear the mask and then go in here and just start to clean things up. And I'm much better positioned than I was before. A lot faster, a lot easier, and I think it's looking better. So there you have it. Dynamic symmetry, a real time-saving, or in some cases, butt-saving feature in ZBrush. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bloop, ah, don't. <laughs>